Well, hello. We are excited to be sharing the administration's proposal for an update to our school's uniform policy with you all. As with our brand update, the board and administration feel that with the school approaching its 30th anniversary and other transitions on the horizon, that now is a fitting time to revisit the uniform 10 years after its initial implementation. In this video, we're going to touch on the history and the process behind the updates and then look more closely at the details of those updates themselves, providing context and rationale all along the way so that you can get the full story uh, of where this is all coming from. Now before we get into those details, I also want to just note a few general things about uniforms and about having a uniform policy. So of course most private schools have a uniform policy and most private schools experience some level of conflict or disagreement about the uniform policy, especially from the students. These often raise uh, or arise from the children having rules or expectations placed on them at the school and in other contexts that they have little say in creating uh, and it can feel stifling or burdensome. Yet, in other situations, many children wear with pride the uniform of their favorite sports team or a team on which they've earned a place or some other organization that they've been part of. In the same way, we hope that Providence students will value being a member of our student body and wear their uniform with the same pride and joy even if the requirements of a uniform policy may go against the preferences of many of the students who desire the freedom to wear what they want, which is understandable. A uniform policy assists in helping students embrace their vocation as a full-time student as they participate in belonging to something bigger than themselves, and they practice the virtue of self-denial for the sake of the good of their education and of our community. We all have preferences, and no uniform will satisfy all of our individual preferences. But the uniform does offer us an opportunity to be tangibly united together as we pursue our shared goal of equipping students for lives of wisdom, virtue, and eloquence to the glory of God. So to begin, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the history and then a little bit about the process of uh, where this uniform proposal came from. So the history. Prior to the 2013-2014 school year, Providence actually operated with a dress code rather than a school uniform. The variety of looks, difficulty in enforcing the code, and the recognition that a uniform best fit our unique vision led the board and administration to appoint a committee to create a truly uniform policy. That policy went into effect during the 2013-2014 school year and is more or less the uniform policy that we have today. It was made clear in that change, controversial though it was at the time, that it was the next step toward the original vision of the school, which was made clear by those who were part of the founding of the school at some of those meetings. This was an excellent step, closer towards realizing our distinct vision for a classical Christian school, and it is this board administration's hope to take the next careful step to that end. So in terms of the process, uh, the uniform committee process and the administration's considerations, I want to share with you what that's looked like. So decisions about the school's uniform policy ultimately rest with the administration as it seeks to implement the school's vision and mission through all of these decisions and these decisions are considered with the board as an advisory body as best practice given their role in preserving our vision and perspective of course as parents. Now when the administration began considering reviewing and updating our uniform policy we began by consulting those who had participated in the last transition uh, including one member of the previous committee who served on our current committee. We listened to feedback about how that process unfolded, what was helpful, what was less helpful, all of which informed how we would proceed. There were advantages and disadvantages to how the uniform formation process was originally implemented 10 years ago, so we sought to learn from the past and move forward in a streamlined way that would strategically incorporate key stakeholders in the formation of a uniform that would be the next step of our uniform policy. The administration appointed a committee to review and propose the updates to the uniform in order to gain multiple perspectives, receiving helpful feedback, collaborate together to produce a thoroughly thought out policy. Now this committee uh, was made up of myself and Mr. Keating, the administration, and then of course we had assistance from a few other community members, Mrs. Krista Marcott, who served on the previous committee and has run our resale for 10 years in addition to having had four children come all the way through the school with one student still here currently. Mrs. Pam Case and Mrs. Jenny Matul, who have children here in various grades and have had responsibilities implementing our current policy from the office and have received many years of feedback and 
Mrs. Cherish Wilson as well, a board member who has young children in the school and has a newer member of our school community, brought a fresh set of eyes and perspectives, uh, being a newer family. The key point that we really appreciated about this committee is that all members have a deep commitment to the school's vision and also a deep sense of our culture and identity. So we're very grateful to their service and the many hours that they have put into the devising of this uniform policy. The committee considered the vision and guiding principles behind a uniform policy at Providence. That's where we began. We also collected feedback from current families as well as considering the feedback received over the past 10 years having implemented the current policy. And then we considered how well the current uniform was realizing those guiding principles. And then we surveyed the landscape of alternative uniform options before us by way of due diligence. So that's kind of a summary of sort of the steps in that process. Now in addition, the administration sought the feedback of the board and of the faculty on potential revisions and has received recommendation of the board to move forward with the proposed update that you're about to see. As a board and administration, it's our job to continually consider how well what we are doing is achieving our distinctive vision. And as we encounter ways in which we can refine our practices to better realize our guiding principles, it's our duty to pursue such improvements. The committee has worked for the past several months to come up with a proposal that we believe will best serve the school for many years ahead. Though we did not enter the process with the goal of making major changes to the uniform, as we considered the multitude of variables that factor into each choice, we concluded that significant revisions were actually necessary to more fully achieve what our uniform is designed to fulfill in our vision. Essentially, we asked ourselves this. If we have the opportunity in a transitional moment in the life of the school to identify our ideal look while incorporating 10 years of feedback based on our school's first attempt at a uniform, what would that look be? Would it be our current uniform, which was the first uniform adopted by the school as our first step from a dress code? Or would we do some things differently? Would there be value in incorporating the school's logo on uniform pieces? Is there an advantage in distinguishing the school's regular and dress uniform more distinctly, perhaps by adding a blazer to the more formal uh, dress uniform? How can we offer a better range of sizes in slim and husky in the lower school? Would we want to consider a shorts option for lower school boys? As we considered these questions, we came back to the conclusion that it would be helpful to develop an alternative ensemble to the current uniform that answered some of these questions and potentially set us up for the next 30 years of Providence's story. Like our relaunch of the house system a few years ago, we sought to gather what we've learned from the pioneer system and apply needed refinements to an integral practice of our school to further settle on this identity marker in a way that aligns with our vision more deeply and more effectively. As with the house relaunch, we had to marry our ideals with our desire to create a functional, cohesive house system that honored our past while creating something closer to our school's ideal realization of the house system. Likewise, we've sought to do the same with this uniform proposal. We realize this may be a bigger change than some of you were expecting, and so we do wish to be sensitive to how you may feel surprised. However, we ask that you take time to consider the full picture of the background, of the details, of the rationale about to be shared, and trust that it is our desire to serve our students and our families well. Reviewing a uniform policy is not an easy or a simple process, and revising a uniform is even more challenging. So we appreciate your patience and your trust as we move forward in this process. As a reminder, this proposal is not for the coming school year, uh, and so we will take this next year to make sure that our implementation of a new policy goes as smoothly as possible. All right, now I'm gonna pass things off to Mr. Keating while he shares the details of the uniform. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Mr. Buckles and uh, I'm going to be jumping into a little bit more of the, the concrete details of the proposal that uh, we're putting before you, and we'll kind of look through uh, some of the things that are staying the same, some things that are changing, take a quick look at uh, how that would impact next school year, and then uh, talk a little bit about cost. So that's what's coming up. So first, let's start with what's staying the same. So generally, the same spirit in the uniform will be maintained. Though there will be some changes to the appearance and emphasis at various points, we're still going to have that singular uniform look that the board, the administration, all believe is part of our identity as a private school. 
Uh, there's still going to be two levels of dress for most grades, a formal dress and an everyday dress. Though we'll note that that formal dress is actually dropping away for a few grades, there are still those two tiers for most grades. We are going to continue to use our same vendors, Land's End and French Toast. We did look at other vendors and considered, hey, are there other vendors that offer uh, better prices? Are there vendors who have a brick and mortar store where families could try on items? Um, but as we looked at all the various vendors, no one was able to compete with Land's End in terms of their immediate and long-term availability of uniform pieces, um, the variety of options they offer. Um, and then as you consider the discounts that Land's End and French Toast offer regularly, 20 to 40% uh, off of their uniform prices, uh, their prices actually end up becoming uh, competitive with most every other uniform vendor. And so for those reasons, even as we looked past those, our current vendors, we decided to stay with Land's End as our primary vendor with a few French Toast items. There are some uh, other similarities uh, or carryovers from the current policy in this proposal. The shoe policy uh, isn't changing. We did look at, hey, are there options for more flexibility there? Um, but at the end of the day, we came to our current shoe policy through lots of years of feedback and trial and error. And so we do feel like the current shoe policy is uh, the best way forward. Lower school girls in pre-K pre to third grade will continue to wear jumpers. And then the everyday boys shirt in the lower school is going to continue to be uh, the Navy polo. And the formal uniforms for lower and upper, upper school students are going to continue to feature the white dress shirts that we've been using. So th those are some of the things that are staying the same uh, with our current proposal. So what's changing then? Well, a few different things. Uh, notably, we are, uh, the proposal involves changing our pant color in order to offer uh, a variety of sizes. So the decision to switch from gray to khaki pants uh, was motivated primarily by years of parental feedback requesting an option for pants to come in slim and husky sizes. Land's End has been clear that they don't foresee offering those selections in gray, uh, so that left navy and khaki as our only options to consider. And we selected khaki because it fit well with the navy polos that have been staples of our everyday lower school uniform for the boys. Additionally, we've added a shorts option for the warmer months for the lower school boys. And we hope this will provide some more fitting, uh, something more fitting for the hot days and even maybe preserve the knees of some of those pants. I'd also note that uh, we've added elastic options for pants and shorts in the pre-K and K uh, boys uniform. And that those were also, uh, especially the shorts, were only available in khaki. So there were a few different items that we thought the, the versatility of them would be really helpful to our community, but they were really only available in khaki and not in gray. And so those were all the various things that pushed us towards changing the color of our pants. The second notable thing that's changing, uh, a new plaid. And so you can see on the screen the new plaid color scheme. Uh, and it's perhaps the most notable change. And we didn't enter the process of reviewing the uniform with the intent of changing the plaid. However, the opportunity to revisit our color scheme in light of the school's updated academic brand, which is navy and white with gold accents, as well as the switch to khaki for the boys in order to allow for those various sizes that I just talked about, were the driving factors for considering a change in plaid. The new plaid is more navy forward. It complements the khaki pants better. And it also would complement the new navy blazers that we're looking at for the upper school, which I'll touch on shortly. In short, there were a variety of different issues that kind of like puzzle pieces snapped into place when we identified switching the plaid as a potential solution. We're also uh, proposing adding the Providence monogram to uh, a variety of pieces in this new uniform uh, proposal. Uh, so adding a monogram or logo was something that the school decided, de desired even in the original rollout of the uniform 10 years ago, but it was, a, it was too big of a step at that time. And so placing the new monogram on our polos and quarter zips will take the next step in drawing our school uniform together while allowing Providence to be better seen and known as we're out about in the community. And it will provide faculty clarity about whether an item a student is wearing is part of the uniform. Furthermore, the nicely embroidered monogram is also going to elevate our everyday look. 
and we chose to develop the monogram partially with a view towards uh, being able to place it on uniform pieces as it's a little bit simpler than our current crest. So we wanted to, per to preserve the crest because we thought its uh, symbols and look and continuity with our identity were important, but we also felt like being able to put our school's identity on our uniform was a uh, was a great opportunity. And so the monogram kind of creates a, a clean, uh, a little bit more simple look that's better for embroidery, uh, but still gets at our school's identity. Additionally, we're looking at adding an upper school blazer uh, for the formal uniform for our upper school boys and girls. Our, one of our desires has been to elevate our formal look in the upper school so that it provides something more distinct from our everyday look and is truly professional in appearance. Our current uniform is essentially the everyday uniform plus the sweater, uh, but we've received pretty consistent feedback that the sweaters don't wash or wear well, and the committee, committee has observed that our formal look tends to look pretty worn uh, by the time we get to most of our formal events. So the blazer offers an additional layer of warmth while maintaining the dressier look of the formal uniform. It allows our young men and women to have an outfit that reflects professionalism and class for formal occasions such as thesis presentations, choir performance, and festivals. Uh, and we do plan on having a try-on session next year so that students can get fitted for blazers that are particularly appropriate for them. Additionally, we're adding a new optional item to the uniform proposal that would encompass both lower and upper school students, and it's the optional quarter zip. Uh, and this is, reflects a desire for the uniform to be adjustable to a wide range of temperatures, whether it's you know 95 in August or below zero in January, or sometimes it's 95 in August and the AC is pumping really cold in the classroom, and so having another layer is even helpful in those contexts. And so uh, we want the new uniform policy to, to be adjustable to all the different temperatures that students might experience, both indoors and outdoors, and have that flexibility day in and day out. And so that what drove the desire, the desire to have uh, or add an optional uh, quarter zip pullover. This would be a monogram embroidered quarter zip that would be an everyday option for warmth. So it would be optional but not required. Um, and our preferred item is a rapid dry fabric, uh, but their, their size offerings don't go all the way down to the smallest of sizes. And so uh, and those smaller sizes uh, for the youth, we would offer uh, a fleece version of the same. And this would essentially replace the current sweaters, Friday sweatshirts, and long sleeve polos, which all have kind of collectively operated as options for warmth. We would have a sort of singular option for warmth as part of the everyday uniform. There's a few adjustments to fabric types in the upper school. Um, and the first one of those is that the upper school boys' pants are now what uh, Land's End calls an active chino. It's a fabric that's a little bit more durable and flexible for everyday use. The khaki pants will dress up with the navy blazer, but also fit nicely with uh, the polo. The material is also lighter for warmer months uh, when the upper school boys don't have that shorts option that the lower school boys have. We've chosen to use rapid dry polos in the upper school, and that's primarily because of their durability, but also given their crisp, clean look. Given that uh, we're gonna be shifting towards wearing them more frequently, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, and the evidence of 10 years of how our current polos lose their shape and color after lots of washing and wear, we wanted to look at an alternative that would maintain both shape and color over the long run. Now, we didn't make this move in the lower school primarily because of cost. The rapid dry polos are a bit more expensive than our current polos, and younger students tend to stain, tear, or otherwise uh, destroy their clothing more quickly than our older students. And so we didn't think the rapid dry was the sensible choice for them, but we thought uh, that it could be a really good option for our upper school students. There will no longer be a formal uniform for pre-K to third grade. There hasn't been a formal uniform for pre-K uh, and kindergarten for the past several years, um, but we're extending that up through third grade. Um, and uh, there are accessories that will be part of the formal uniform for fourth through sixth grade, uh, ties and that sort of thing are gonna be provided by the school. And so this is an attempt to alleviate the cost of a formal uniform on those youngest grades when there aren't very many occasions where they would actually wear that uniform. 
<clears throat> so one of the last things I'm going to note is that we're looking at shifting the balance of the everyday versus the formal uniform in the upper school. And so the everyday uniform would be polos and slacks for the gents and polos and skirts for the ladies. That'd be the everyday look. Um, and then the formal look would be a dress shirt, tie, and blazer for the gents and a dress shirt, uh, skirt, and blazer for the ladies. The everyday polo uniform would be worn Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then the formal uniform would be worn on Wednesdays, as well as for any formal occasions throughout the year. So there's currently very little distinction between our everyday and dress uniforms in the upper school. And one of the byproducts has been that the dress uniform has borne a lot of wear and tear uh, from being worn every day. And it looks decidedly less excellent on the occasions that we want to look particularly formal or dressy. So shifting the dressier look to one day a week will still require students to have and keep up their formal uniform without putting it through all that excessive wear. When we need to look formal, uh, we'll have an even more formal look that fits the occasion. So the administration doesn't see this move as a reduction in formality, but rather a way of preserving our formal look for the moments that it's most necessary. Uh, as we looked around at other schools uh, across the country that share our vision and mission, other classical Christian schools, we saw that this sort of approach to the balance of uh, polos and formal wear like ties and blazers uh, was a pretty consistent with the standard practice of like-minded schools. And we do want to fully, more fully realize our vision of formality by preserving it for the times that it's most appropriate. So here you can see at a glance the everyday uniform for both lower and upper school students. This isn't the final look um, as we're still waiting for embroidery to come back. Uh, and we do plan on producing a full photo gallery of students in the various uniform pieces once we have all of them in their final form. All these changes are broken down in detail uh, on a grade specific level in our attached uniform documents. Um, and there will be, as I said, pictures of what they look like on students forthcoming. So let's talk a little bit about cost. So as the committee considered these things, we sought to come as close to breaking even with the current cost of the uniform as possible. For example, the increased cost of embroidery is generally offset by the elimination of the dress uniform for younger grades and the removal of the cost of sweaters. The school is also purchasing and providing formal uniform accessories for some of these grades. In the upper school, increased costs are off offset by a reduction in the number of the more expensive dress shirts uh, and elimination of the sweaters that were part of the old dress uniform. Now there are some increased costs and some of those are you know significant one-time costs that our families will have to bear in terms of adopting this new proposal. Obviously the old plaid jumpers and skirts along with boys pants won't able to be able to be handed down after this coming year necessitating the purchase of new items um, and then secondly the purchase of blazers uh, in the upper school. So there's a couple ways that the administration has seized that and is trying to um, provide some assistance in the midst of that. So we are seeking to uh, move our uniform, our used uniform sales uh, into the office to provide a centralized system for the purchase of used items. And so uh, that we hope that the cost for more expensive items like blazers is ultimately going to be offset by the ability to pur purchase used items in future years. It's also the administration's intention to offer some sort of tuition credit next year to families who re-enroll for the following year to help offset the one-time increase in cost that you're bearing as we make this transition. And more details will be forthcoming uh, once we've finalized the policy. The uniform documents that are attached provide relative cost comparisons between the old and new uniform for a more detailed piece-by-piece -piece analysis. Um, so you can check those documents out for those details. I want to note a few changes for the upcoming 2023-2024 school year that will be beginning in just a few months in August in view of the proposal that the, that the administration has for the uniform in 24-25. So the first of those changes is that there will no longer be a sweater or vest requirement as part of the dress uniform for next year. And that's because those items are going away in the 24-25 proposal. 
Now, if you have them at home, students are still welcome to wear them as a warmth option as part of their everyday uniform, but they won't be part of the dress uniform for next year. Uh, instead, students may actually purchase the new Navy quarter zip pullover uh, for a warmth option for next year. So if you're a family who um, has a student who doesn't, doesn't have a sweater that fits for next year, you should feel welcome to go ahead and purchase uh, the new quarter zip pullover that will be part of the 24-25 uniform a year early uh, so that you have that warmth option, but also that it will be able to carry, be carried on into the subsequent school years and going forward. The last thing I'll note is that pre-K through sixth grade girls can continue to wear the Land's End Peter Pan shirt, which is being discontinued by Land's End. That's a shirt that's been an option for lower school girls uh, for many years, uh, but Land's End is discontinuing the current version of that Peter Pan shirt. If you have it, if you've had it passed down to you, you're welcome to wear it next year, um, but it won't be in the uniform policy proper because it's no longer available or it won't be available for purchase from Land's End going forward. And so the French toast uh, version is what you'll find in the 23-24 school year uh, uniform policy, but you may continue to wear that Land's End version if you wish. All of these changes are noted in detail in the 2023-2024 uniform document, which is attached to the email with all of the different uniform communications. The last thing I'll note is that the administration understands that next year is going to be a transitional year and we're gonna be looking to get the most possible wear out of items that we currently own as families or that we get as part of our uniform exchange. We're gonna to seek to be as generous as we can be with any uniform pieces that the school has on our part, uh, distributing them out to families so that we can uh, get the most value that we can out of the, the current uh, items that we have uh, before they go away at the end of next year. We also are talking through what potential options we have for donating some of the items that will be discontinued on our end to another school that might have need. And so those are a few of the things that we're looking ahead to for next year. With that, I'm gonna pass it off to Mr. Buckles, who's going to give a few concluding remarks. It's a lot of details, uh, we understand. Uh, and so hopefully you're able to sort through them and make good sense of them. But as we sort of close out this presentation, uh, I just wanna share a couple of things. So what we've shared with you all uh, is the administration's proposal for a revised uniform for the 24-25 school year, uh, generated in consultation and with the legwork of the uniform committee. We're deeply grateful for the work of the committee because if it had just been the administration reviewing the policy, we are absolutely confident it would not be as well considered or as attractive. Now this proposal has been reviewed and approved by the board. Uh, it's also been presented to the faculty and we've had discussions with faculty members as well. It expresses what the administration, committee, and board believe to be the very best reflection of our school's character, identity, and vision. And we anticipate it will serve us well into the future. This is not the final 24-25 uniform policy. There are still a few open questions that need to be resolved, some of which that Mr. Keating already alluded to, and we welcome any feedback from the community as we head into the summer. Please feel free to reach out with questions and comments that you might have, be they positive or negative. We know there may be parts that you love and parts that you don't. But in the end, we hope that you will share some of the excitement that we have for what this new uniform will look like and how its rollout in the 24-25 school year will help mark the next stage in the growth of our school as we pursue a deeper embodiment of the vision of Providence. Thank you.